Welcome back to LVB. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another reaction. And we're going to be reacting to the reason for almost all mental illness with Professor Jordan Peterson. I'm really enjoying these lectures, man, and we do too. Uh, it's very insightful. I always like to see what Jordan Peterson has to say, but we want to see what he has to say on mental illness. Let's hop right in. Okay, so let's go back to the complexity problem. See, I, I actually think it's the, in some sense, it's the fundamental problem. When, when you read about the terror management theorist types, they think that death is the fundamental problem. And that's a good argument because this is definitely a fundamental problem, but I think it's a subset of the complexity problem. And, and the reason I think that is because sometimes people's lives become so complex that they'd rather be dead. So, and the reason they seek death when, through suicide is to make the complexity go away. Because complexity causes suffering if it's uncontrolled. You know, things just get beyond your control. Um, and that can happen, you know, if you're hit by three or four catastrophes at the same time. You know, maybe you have, you know, oh, the political system collapses, there's hyperinflation... You lose your job and you have so yeah kind of like right now it's kind of the say you turn on the news there's just too much going on right now man. Yeah. coronavirus i didn't even know there were still riots going on in portland still Fucking donald trump just sent his troops down there and yeah take he care sent of business. troops to chicago he yeah. sent troops to chicago too now the chicago mayor is talking about you're not welcome here i just heard one, a mayor of some city just got gassed oh you know, yeah i don't know what you're talking about yeah man it's every time you turn on a new and I, I just find out that over 800,000 kids get trafficked in the, United, in the United States alone every year. We never talk about that. It's just always, it's just always something, man. Yeah. So it, it can definitely be, definitely nowadays, with just how much access we have to information, it can be... Yeah, it can so, be overwhelming. Yeah. You have to think about that, too. Our, our mind is just programmed to eat and survive. Anything to survive, basically. Everything and else. then you throw in all these extra emotions, other people's emotions, yeah. daily life stuff. Anything you like, you don't realize how much effect just even talking to people have on like the human mind. Communication, it's just yeah. there's a lot of that shit plays in factors. Especially when it, the information can be wrong, it's, it's usually biased. So. And it starts too as soon as you start conceiving information too. It, your family, anything, you're always taught to be careful and be um cautious of the things going around you. Yeah. So. Someone that you love or two people die and maybe you get cancer or something like that. Like that, those things happen to people and they just think, well, there's no getting out of this. Like, it's just too much. And, you know, one of the things that's very interesting about being a psychologist is that what you learn if you're going to be a psychologist is that people come to you with mental illnesses. And that's almost never true. People come to you because their lives are so damn complicated, they cannot stay on top of them in any way that doesn't make it look like they're just going to get more complicated. And so then that causes symptoms, you know, it's like it's this old idea, it's sort of a metaphor for genetic susceptibility. Take a balloon and blow it up until it's beyond its tolerance, it's going to blow out at the weakest point. Well, that's sort of what a genetic susceptibility is. If I just keep adding complexity on top of you, at some point you'll blow out at your weakest point. You know, maybe you'll get physiologically ill, maybe you'll start drinking, maybe you'll develop an anxiety disorder, maybe you'll get OCD, maybe you'll get depressed, whatever. There'll be something about you that's the weakest point, and if I just push, that's where you'll blow out. So that's a mental illness, but those things almost never just happen. Sometimes, but not very often. Usually people have just been hammered like two or three different ways, and then they collapse in the direction of their biological weakness, and then maybe you put them back together, but... It's almost always a complexity-related phenomena rather than a mental illness-related phenomena. Not always, but almost always. That's true, man. You gave it all that complex, but for me, whenever I feel like something's just too much, I can, I can feel it. my anxiety start begins to take over. And then, eventually, it gets to the point where I'm not even depressed anymore, I'm just angry. Like, I remember when I was in high school, man, I'm, I gotta say, like, my... 11th and 12th grade years were not great years for me, man. It was just a lot of anger that had built up in me. And I, I, I got to thank my teacher, Mr. Barga, for out there. I thank you a lot, man, because me being able to talk to you helped me a lot, being able to, like, 
know how to control my anger and find different ways to have an outlet. But yeah, the same over here too. When I first moved back from California, I actually met him when I lived in Pittsburgh. And we're gonna actually do a video soon about us giving us some dialogue and more information about ourselves. But I first lived in Pittsburgh because my mom was real sick. She had cirrhosis of the liver, which means um, her liver is about two, three times the normal size of a liver. It's starting to fail. It's on the fourth stage. So we moved back to California. Worst comes to worst because that's where my family's at. And I felt so out of control, you know. Not only that, I moved away from everything I knew once again. Um, I lost 45 credits like I didn't do my freshman year because we moved mid-semester. Um... There's a lot of stuff, and one of the people that helped a lot was my mom, of course. And my ex, I was really controlling and stuff, which kind of makes sense, you know. I didn't have any control at all about the things going around me and surrounding me. So, all this makes clear sense, especially since we've lived through it all. So, yeah. But, yeah. but um, tell us some stuff, man. Tell us what you guys want to see, what you guys want to watch. Tell us your opinions on us. We appreciate the feedback, of course. We need more comments, more likes, more subscribers, you know. Road to 400 now. So we appreciate yeah. it. you guys getting us to 300. It's another milestone. But thank you for everything, and we'll, we'll see you all next time. time. Peace.